Hi, I'm Heinbach. Good to have you back. In my search for test equipment to use in my music, I came across something of a unicorn. The Grundig Signalspeicher SS1. What is so special about the Schallspeicher or Sega memory? Well, it's a commercially made tape looper for laboratory use. A commercially made tape looper in itself would already be outstanding, but the thing that sets it apart from anything else that I know is that it only records 19.5 milliseconds. So it's something of a microsound recorder. The idea behind this was that you record short signals and are able to view them on the scope without having to repeat the signal all the time. It came about at a time when the first digital units appeared on the market that could store and playback sounds, but these were very expensive. So Grundig developed this on the trusted technology of magnetic tape recording. I found this on eBay and it said Attic Find appears to be new in box. And that was true, it was new in box. And it came with the full manual, a box of what I presume is tape reels. I haven't even looked into that. And curiously, Sicherheitsreinigungsspray mit Kaltron for Magnetaufzeichnungsanlagen, which is apparently a cleansing spray for a cleaning spray for uh, magnetic tape machines, which I'm very excited about, but I doubt that this will work because the tin is rusted and I don't know if there's like a expiry date on here. Doesn't seem to be anything. But just look at the can art. Here you can see the tape going across the reels and spools. And yeah, there's still the hose, was it a hose? Straw attached. So this will be the first thing that I'm going to try out if this still works. Probably have to shake it a lot. And let me say that I haven't used the Signalspeicher at all so far. I only put it in the rack, powered it on to see if it works. And apparently it powers on and the motor spins, which is great. But I don't know if it actually works. So this might either be a very short video or <laughs> we'll see how this turns out. So this might be enough. Put this in here. Let this be an indicator about the whole process of this video. Ah! It works! <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, it smells. But according to here, it's, uh, it's practically health not damaging. <laughs> Which is a nice way to put it. <laughs> it's practically not damaging, but probably puts out so much aerosols that the ozone layer is getting killed by what I'm doing right now. Uh, fun. Let's turn it on. And you can see the motor here turns. Let's try connect it to the oscilloscope first. You can see something there. Well, that doesn't mean a thing because there's nothing on the tape loop now. But it works. You can see, at least there's something coming out. So maybe we connect something to the input. Let's take this one because then you can all see what I'm doing. Here's buttons for playback and the button for recording. Let's break open one of these boxes. I'm gonna need a knife. Knife. Ah! Cute. Look at that, what's this? It's a green tape loop, I've never seen that, but it's not a tape loop, it looks like felt or something. Maybe for cleaning. Secret of the green loop. <laughs> and here we've got the loop. Splice point seems okay. So this might be a nice follow-up if Simon posts the shortest tape loop video, because I think I found the machine for the shortest tape loop ever now. So I'm gonna switch this off, because I'm not sure I can switch this while it's running. And now here's a knob called Bandwechsel. This might be the thing where you, that you can use to change it. Just tilts this thing downwards. 
Okay, so now we've got a loop on there. I don't see where the read or write heads are. I just put it in the position that appears natural. Let's turn it on again. This is working. Where's the tape loop at? It went all the, the tape loop went all the way to the back. Let's get a signal in here. Now the signal is passing through. Let's hit record. Let's hit play. I feel I'm only getting ground hum. Ah! So it works. It appears to be sound on sound recording. Or just a massive ground hum. I think I should read the manual for a bit. So I skimped the manual and apparently I didn't do anything wrong, but there is some sort of frequency modulation going on and that's supposed to be for the scope. As this is measuring stuff, I've got no idea what this is about, but I think I can get rid of that. But that was have been the tone that we were hearing the bump. So I'm just gonna turn a few more knobs and see how this whole thing works. Maybe I can turn on the amplitude of this wire this thing with this knob here, or this little calibration thingy, and see if that works. Ah! Okay. Yes! That was a good guess. So now I'm turning it way... So hello? Ah! Gone! So let's record. There it is again. Ah, oh, yeah. There appears to be no good way to get rid of the trigger signal. Because this thing was meant for measurements and that signal is necessary for the oscilloscope to get the information that it needs and it's basically meant to use for sync these two, which I can just for fun try now. That's some nice noise. What's happening here? This is pretty cool! <laughs> I actually have no idea what's happening. I just connected the sync of the oscilloscope to the sync in here and it's doing crazy modulation stuff. So it can get some nice fire effects. Got a noise generator.
So, I haven't quite found a way what this could be musically useful, except for a basically always fixed frequency modulated FM signal, which is not that great. Maybe if I try feeding it something else, maybe if I can get somehow voice in there. We can try and filter everything. Yeah. Ouch! There was a knife. I have now routed the Schallspeicher, uh, Signalspeicher, I mean, through the Breland Care filter here which allows me to really hone in on different frequencies. But I like this one. It feels like a softly modulated, very organic LFO, sort of signish signal. So I'm gonna do the thing that everyone does when the result of the sounds that you were working with isn't that great. I'm adding effects. First, a warped vinyl, which is here. Can you see? Yes. And it adds some amplitude modulation. Next up, Montreal Assembly count to five. The AMA reverb. Now it's pitched a bit. These are really nice waves. Now I add some Strymon Timeline. And now maybe add more stuff. Not really uplifting yet, but maybe that's not the mood I'm in right now. So together with the bandpass filter, it is possible to get some usable sounds out of the Signalspeicher. But it's not that great of a win as I thought. It probably would need heavy modding, like a way to remove the modulator signal and also maybe a way to adjust the pitch, but that's beyond my skill set. So maybe I'll have to ask someone like Walter von Welthofen or Look, mom, no computer, if they want to have a look at this beautiful thing. 
mm, but I like the track that came out. It's kind of it's kind of my mood after trying out for hours to get this to work. It's pretty intense, but it's also nice. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. The music is, of course, on my Patreon. And if you have any questions, leave in the comments below. <laughs> Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Hi, I'm the Magpie. Hi, I'm Heinbach. Good to have you back. <laughs> Thomas Synth Reactor 2019, where some of us YouTubers will be going to. We'll have unlimited access to all products stored in our warehouse, in their warehouse. <laughs> it's gonna be our warehouse then. Marienberg is coming. Rolly. We also have a hashtag. What's the hashtag? Just hashtag interactions. To interact with you. Okay. Got no idea if this is good when we record it. <laughs> yeah, they're just gonna get this. It's gonna be like, it's not in 4K. I don't like, people got a bloody webcam. We can't use this with the really proper ones that the rest of the YouTubers have done. <laughs> but we should try and find the, the best synthesizer in the Tomam thing that makes the best fart sound. That's you another fun thing you're gonna see at the Thomas <laughs> Reactor 2019. <laughs>